Hello friends, this video on electrochemistry part 27 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now we have seen electrolysis, right? We have seen it works, it works like magic. It helps to electroplate a substance, it helps to purify copper, it also helps to create replica of old monuments. Now the question is, how do you quantify it? Till now we have not quantified electrolysis. Right? We know electrolysis happens, uh, the transfer of electron happens and Cu plus, Cu becomes Cu2 plus and it, it moves from uh, anode to cathode, those things we have seen. But we have not seen how to quantify it. So to quantify, Michael Faraday, he was the first scientist who actually described the quantitative aspect of electrolysis. So he did exhaustive investigation on electrolytic solutions and he published his law in 1833 actually. 1833, he published his law in the form of Faraday's two law of electrolysis. In fact, there are two laws of electrolysis, right? The first law is the amount of chemical reaction that occurs at any electrode during electrolysis by a current is proportional to the electricity passed through. That means amount of chemical reaction that happens at a given electrode during electrolysis will be directly proportional to the current, current amount. If you pass more current, you will get more reaction. If you pass less current, you will get less reaction. That was the first law. Right? Second law, assume you pass the same current. You pass the same current, but still it was observed that you get different substance. Right? So if you pass the same amount of current, so in that case, if the current is constant, my current is fixed. Right, I am passing the same amount of current. So in that case, the amount of uh, substance which you get, amount of substance that is deposited will be directly proportional to chemical equivalent weight. Chemical. And what is chemical equivalent weight? That is nothing but atomic mass mass of metal divided by the number of electrons required to reduce it. Electrons required to reduce it. For example, for copper, atomic mass is what? 63. And generally, if we have, let's suppose, Cu2 plus 2 Cu. Right? So the number of electrons required to reduce is 2. So for copper, my equivalent atomic chemical equivalent weight will be 63 by 2. For sodium, let's suppose, sodium, let's suppose Na plus becomes Na with one electron. So for sodium, the atomic mass is 23 and number of electron required is 1. So this will be 23 by 1 will be my chemical equivalent weight. Right? So two law. First is pretty obvious, right? The amount of reaction depends on the amount of current. You more react, more current you pass, more reaction will happen, right? More current you pass, more copper will go from here to here. Let's suppose this is copper and this is copper sulfate solution, and this is a metal to plate. We have seen the example, right? The more current you pass, the more copper will move from here to here. The next is if you pass the same current but you are using different uh, uh, rods here or different electrolytes here. You want to see uh, how much metal is deposited here, right? Because this is here where generally the metals are deposited. Why? Because this is negative charge. In negative charge, you have electrons, and generally we have ions Cu plus two or Na plus. They becomes Na or Cu, right? Here we have the deposition of metals. So that depends here. That depends if the current is fixed. The amount of deposition of metal will depend on the chemical equivalent weight. That is nothing but the atomic mass of metal by the number of electrons required to reduce it. Correct. So he also gave this formula Q is equal to, we know this formula Q is equal to IT. Q is what? 
चार्ज और अमाउंट ऑफ इलेक्ट्रिसिटी इन कूलम्स एन आई वॉट करेंट इन एम्पियर एन टी इज वॉट टाइम करेक्ट सो अमाउंट ऑफ इलेक्ट्रिसिटी और चार्ज रिक्वायर्ड फॉर ऑक्सीजेशन और रिडक्शन डिपेंड्स ऑन द स्टोकोमेट्रिक ऑफ द रिएक्शन फॉर एग्जाम्पल आई हैव एक्स एन प्लस एंड इट टेक्स टेन इलेक्ट्रॉन्स एंड बिकम्स एक्स दैन आई कैन से दैट एन मोल्स ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉन्स आर रिक्वायर्ड टू रिड्यूस वन एटम ऑफ एन प्लस प्लीज नोट दिस स्टेटमेंट आई कैन राइट दैट एन इलेक्ट्रॉन्स आर रिक्वायर्ड टू रिड्यूस वन एटम ऑफ एक्स करेक्ट सो इफ एन इलेक्ट्रॉन्स आर रिक्वायर्ड टू रिड्यूस वन एटम ऑफ एक्स सो देन वाई कैन सी देन आई कैन सी दैट एन इन टू सिक्स पॉइंट जीरो टू थ्री इंटू ट्वेंटी टू पावर ट्वेंटी थ्री इलेक्ट्रॉन्स विल बी रिक्वायर्ड टू रिड्यूस वन मोल बिकॉज वन मोल ऑफ एक्स बिकॉज वन मोल ऑफ एक्स इज नथिंग बट सिक्स इंटू सिक्स पॉइंट जीरो टू थ्री इंटू ट्वेंटी टू पावर ट्वेंटी थ्री एटम्स राइट सो एन इलेक्ट्रॉन्स रिक्वायर्ड फॉर वन एटम ऑफ एक्स फॉर दिस इक्वेशन एग्जाम्पल इन दिस केस सी यू टू प्लस टू इलेक्ट्रॉन गिव सी यू दैट मीन आई कैन सी दैट टू इलेक्ट्रॉन्स आर रिक्वायर्ड टू रिड्यूस वन एटम ऑफ कॉपर करेक्ट सिमिलरली एन इलेक्ट्रॉन्स आर रिक्वायर्ड टू रिड्यूस एक्स वन एटम ऑफ एक्स यू मल्टीप्लाई बाई वन मोल दैट मीन्स एन इन टू सिक्स पॉइंट जीरो टू थ्री इलेक्ट्रॉन्स आर रिक्वायर्ड टू रिड्यूस वन मोल ऑफ एक्स एंड वन मोल ऑफ एक्स इज नथिंग बट यू नो दैट द एटोमिक मास ऑफ एक्स करेक्ट दिस इज नथिंग बट एटोमिक मास वन मोल ऑफ एक्स एंड इफ यू सी इफ यू दिस दिस मेनी इलेक्ट्रॉन्स आर रिक्वायर्ड नाउ now if i want to find how many charge this electron has i know that one electron has one electron has 1.6021 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb charge so these many electron will have how many charge so let's see there charge in n into 6.023 into 10 to the power 23 electron is nothing but n into 6.023 into 10 to the power 23 into one electron that is 1.6021 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb. We saw this comes out to be n into 96487 coulomb. And this 96487 coulomb is nothing but one Faraday. So this is nothing but n Faraday. So this is this we have seen right 96487 is one coulomb. Uh, one nine six four eight seven coulomb is one Faraday. So from this reaction, I can say that this n Faraday charge is required for one mole of x. Correct. For this reaction, n Faraday of charge is required to reduce one mole of compound atom x. Hope you understand this. We quantified this. N Faraday charge is required to reduce one mole of n plus for example ag plus ag right so i can say that one faraday is required to reduce one mole of ag similarly mg2 plus it needs two electron to become mg You can say that two Faraday charge is required for one mole of magnesium. Similarly, Al three plus it needs three electron to become Al. I can say that three Faraday charge is required to reduce one mole of aluminium. Now, iron Fe three it takes one mole of electron to become iron Fe two plus later. So I can say that one Faraday charge is required to reduce one mole of Fe three plus to Fe two plus. But again, if it is Fe three plus to let's suppose three electron becomes Fe, then I can say that three Faraday charge is required to reduce ferric one mole of ferric to iron state. But here one Faraday charge is required to reduce ferric to ferrous one mole. 
correct so let's take some numerical on this the question says a solution of copper sulfate is electrolyzed for 10 minutes with a current of 1.5 ampere what is the mass of copper deposit for example this is my anode and this is my cathode as i already told plus charge is negative charge deposit always happen at cathode for minutes right so they are asking how much copper will be deposited if you see the reaction at cathode will be cu2 plus it takes two electron becomes copper this reaction we have seen so many times right this becomes copper solid because this is a copper sulfate solution it will have cu2 plus and that will take electrons from here because there is a extra electrons here it becomes copper so from this reaction i can say that what two faraday charge is required for one mole of copper and one mole of copper is nothing but 63 gram of copper correct and two faraday charge is how much two into nine six four eight seven coulomb so this much charge is required to produce 63 gram of copper in this cathode First, let's see how much charge is there. So I know that the formula Q is equal to I into T. What is the value of current? Current is 1.5 ampere. What is the value of time? Time has to be in seconds. So 10 minutes is nothing but 10 into 60 seconds. And this is ampere. Solve this, you get 900 coulomb. So now this many coulombs is required to produce 63 grams. That implies if I have 900 coulombs, how much time I will be getting? I will be getting, it will be right here, 63 gram by 2 into this whole value, 96487, multiply by 900, simple maths. You solve this, you get 0.2398 gram. So, if you pass the electricity of 1.5 ampere for 10 minutes, you will be getting 0.2938 grams of copper deposited in the cathode. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online tests, get pre-study materials, find tutors and mentors and much more. Thanks once again.